If you're watching us this morning on our website or DCAP, thanks for tuning in. And if you're watching us later today or this week on our YouTube channel, we hope this Mass brings you comfort. For those of you here in the church, thanks for coming out. Please remember, it's critically important for you to register online if you are coming to church. We also ask that you please silence all electronic devices. No matter where you are or how you got here, please know that you are always most welcome at St. Richard Parish. Today we have the beautiful voice of Julie Martin as our cantor. Our talented keyboardist is Jeff Thatch. Our media producer is Anne Marie Geist. And providing spiritual guidance as our pastor, Father Bruce Flanagan, will be our presider. We also want to thank our volunteers, without whom this in person mass would not be possible. Mary Roach, Sue and John Farmer, John Paul, Colleen Newberry, Lorraine Drapik, Pat Bedard, and Patty Sears. The theme of today's liturgy is We Come Together Seeking the Reign of God, Giving Thanks and Praise for this Great Gift. Today's Mass is being offered for your intentions. Take a moment to bring one to mind.
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, you promise us fulfillment if we but follow you. Help us to stay on the path. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray.
love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And for those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Constantly, 
all day into the night, seeking freedom, seeking companionship, seeking uh, a normal dog's life. And he wasn't going to get it. And this one day he looked out the window and there was the doggy. And somehow the leash had broken. And the dog was still walking around that stake with no attachment to it any longer, but walking around in the same area, crying and yelping and barking. The man struck, was struck by that image and he said, that's me. He said, uh, here I am, if I want to be free, I choose to be free, then I have to act like I'm free. Otherwise, I'm just like that dog who does not appreciate the freedom that he has and does not take advantage of it in any way, shape, or form. That story helps me to understand a little bit more what freedom is. And Jesus tells us that freedom is not being indifferent or irresponsible. It is being both of those things, responsible and making a difference. Being conscious of what I have and what my responsibilities are, but also continuing on with life. There's another story about a gentleman who, uh, again, full of anxiety, uh, was waiting for his uh, doctor's appointment in Back Bay, Boston, and uh, he got there considerably early, as his anxiety always made him do, hours in advance. And so he decided to go into the Gardner Museum. And as he was walking through the rooms, he went into this one room with a, a very large painting of uh, uh, the storm on the Sea of Galilee is, and he looked at that, and looked at that, and sat down, and took it all in again, and he realized that he was in that boat, along with all of the apostles, the disciples. And they were filled with anxiety at the storm that was tossing and turning. He could, he could hear the wind going through the, uh, uh, the simple sails that they had and the rigging, and he could feel the water tossing them uh, about in the boat, and uh, and uh, and then he looked and he realized that Jesus is fast asleep in the bottom of the boat. Not at all being tossed and turned and worried and full of anxiety. And the apostles shook him and woke him up and said, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna go down. We're gonna drown. You gotta you gotta save us." And he said, "Ye of little faith, you people of little faith, put your life into God's hands." And they said, "Probably, yeah." Easy for you to say. And we might do that all the time too. Yeah, easy for you to say, God. But the truth is, without being indifferent or irresponsible, we can be calm in the presence of the storm. We can, with the grace of God, presenting ourselves to God, first and asking him to be with us, we can be pretty much calm and cool and collected in the midst of that chaos. It's easy to get caught up in the winds, to be rocked by the waves, to be filled with tension, Anxiety, what's next? Oh my God. But God invites us to cling to Him, to hold fast, to settle down, 
and to let all that's going on around us, which we have no control over, go on around us. But we need to be still and steadfast in God's love. A woman, uh, a dear lady, married to a gentleman for about 20 years, and lost her husband early, young man. And he left her with six children to raise, to feed, to house, to take care of. And she was uh, wrought with anxiety for the first few days, and finally she said, I have responsibility here, I cannot ignore. And so she prayed, and she asked God for guidance. And what did she do? She took in three or four more children, foster children, and raised them with her own. And as the days and the months and the years moved on, she was constantly in attendance to their needs, to their growth, to their spiritual life, to their ability to grow into good, decent human beings. And as uh, the times went on, there were times when things were tough and people helped her, particularly her church community. They gave her the help that she needed. She got through those difficult times, and as these children grew of age and uh, became adults, uh, and they were all fine adults, uh, the uh, local reporter wanted to do a story, and he came and he said, and one of the questions he asked was uh, a very simple question, how, how did you do that? And she said, well, Three days after I buried my husband, I made a bargain with God. She said, I realized I really loved children. And my talents were working with them, helping them to grow into adulthood. I knew that's what was inside of me. And so I, I made a bargain with God. I said, God, I'm willing to do the work if you're willing to do the worrying. And she said, I kept my side of the bargain. And then she said, and God kept his side of the bargain. And look what happened. We didn't avoid difficult times. We didn't run away from them. We lived through them. As life is full of them. And yet none of them overcame us as a family. They only made us stronger. They only made us more pliable more thoughtful, more full of wisdom. Like Solomon in the first reading, we knew how to handle life because God was teaching us all the way along. And God will stand by us if we stand with Him. And that's the truth. Now, I don't know about you, there are days when I don't know a thing about myself. But I know that God loves me and you. And he'll take really good care of us. He'll get us through the difficult times because we won't run around frantically saying the sky is falling in, the sky is falling in. We'll sit and ponder what it's all about push that, that craziness away, that anxiety away, and sit in his restful, peaceful, comforting presence, and find out what's next. What's the next step on this adventure? And then have the courage to live it. It's going to be a really hot day, and tomorrow is going to be even more so. And the day after that, how about the same? But one day at a time, we'll get to where we need to go. 
in the meantime, make a bargain with God. Let's pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and the invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us people and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated in the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord our God, we trust in your way not our own, not our neighbors, but in your way. Help us to be faithful to that way as we pray. For all who minister in the church, eager to share its lasting treasure, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wise leaders and brave public servants, working patiently for peace in a violent world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for the sick and the dying, Showing the Lord's love in their daily actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of this assembly, teaching adults how to trust in God's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions presented online today, and especially those held in the silence of our hearts, that the Lord hear them, heal them, and continue to bless us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Mass today is offered for your intentions, whatever they might be, so let us take a moment to bring them before the altar of God. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving God, thank you for your strength, your love, your peace, your hope for us. Help us to sit with you, to join our hands with you, to be your holy people. And we ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen.
sacrifice at my hands. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord who is our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of your mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Richard and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
In a moment, uh, Jim Sears, our elector, will give uh, guidance, direction on how to receive Holy Communion here in church. But as at home we are watching this, we will simply uh, pray the act of spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. There are many things happening in the world as we well know. Some are very good. Some not. The not are that the numbers are increasing a bit again in Massachusetts, and we want to put a stop to that. So be very cautious. We also want to uh, pray for those who are uh, continuing to have uh, grief and loss in their lives, that, that they might be swept up into your mercy, O Lord. Filled with the grace to get them through these difficult times. And for those of us who are uh, here this morning, uh, either on uh, stream or here in the church, we're called to be uh, God's people in the midst of the chaos, uh, to be the people of God, of uh, peace, uh, people of serenity. And, uh, so keep that in mind as you leave and uh, confront the rule of the world uh, as it is and uh, know that God is working all the time for us. He's working 36 hours a day and, uh, and, and uh, will never stop working for us and uh, care for us and, and, and loving us. And so we're going to be safe in his midst, but use your common sense. And you do the work you need to do, and let him do the worrying. And uh, for those of you who are at home uh, watching and uh, listening and praying in, in your, your extension of our church place here of St. Richard, for we are the church as people of God, not particularly the building. And wherever we are, so he is, and so the community is. Uh, uh, enjoy your life. Be good to one another. Uh, know that you're going to play prayers every single day. Uh, and uh, as is your extended family, wherever they might be. And uh, today we have family everywhere, don't we, around the world. So uh, we have it all. If I see that sign one more time, uh, it's a good sign to see. Uh, we are all in this together. And boy, that can't be any more poignant than uh, what's, what's going on today in the world. So. As I ramble, it's time to stop rambling. It's time to, but you don't have to agree so quickly. <laughs> it's a tough group here in the church, people who are at home. You don't let you get away with anything. Um, but if you have a new invention before you today, relish it, enjoy it. It's a task that God's given you to bring you joy. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all time, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Yes, may he bless you with all you need. And by the way, there are some things we don't need, and it's maybe ice cream, a dear parishioner gave me a wonderful note with a little surprise in it to, to, uh, to go and try uh, at one of the local vendors uh, orange and pineapple ice cream. And I wanted to try it. And she, and she gave me directions too, good directions. If you only have a, a scoop at each, each offering, and that'll last you a good long time. And she doesn't know my scoops. <laughs> really big. And it was wonderful. And it's all gone. <laughs> Not gonna last me a long time. And they all went.
Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Maybe get some ice cream. Communion will be distributed from the back of the church as you leave Mass. Row by row exit, starting from the back, will be directed by the usher. Parishioners may well decide not to receive Holy Communion if they feel the risk is too high, and that decision will be honored and respected. The communicants and Father Bruce will wear masks. The communicants should, should not wear gloves during the distribution of Holy Communion. Father Bruce will hold the consecrated host over the communicants' outstretched hands drop the host into their hands without touching their hands. Communicants will receive the consecrated host in their hands, exit the church, lower their mask, consume the host, and proceed to their car. In the case of unintentional contact, the priest will sanitize his own hands immediately.